It is the 10th of April, 2014. The Great Deception Uncovered. Clear your mind of anything you think you know. Anything you've been told by the media. Clear it now. All you know is that you exist. Let me help you uncover the great deception that has plagued the human race for thousands of years. A long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. The Jedi Knights had their story. And as the last film was, The Return of the Jedi, you know who the victor was. A long time later, 3,600 years ago, we have records of what went on. Ezekiel, in the Old Testament of the Bible, is a very long part of the book. And speaks of wondrous things coming from the heavens. I saw a storm wind coming from the north, a vast cloud with flashes of fire and brilliant light about it, and within it was a radiance like brass, glowing in the heart of the flames. In the fire was the semblance of four living creatures in human form. As I looked at the living creatures, I saw wheels on the ground, one beside each of the four. The wheels sparkled like topaz, and they were all alike, in form and working. They were like a wheel inside a wheel, and when they moved in any of the four directions, they never swerved in their course. All four had hubs, and each hub had a projection which had the power of sight. And the rims of the wheels were full of eyes all around. When the living creatures moved, the wheels moved beside them. When the creatures rose from the ground, the wheels rose. And they moved in whatever direction the spirit would go. And the wheels rose together with them. For the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. When the one moved, the other moved. When the one halted, the other halted. When the creatures rose from the ground, the wheels rose together with them, for the spirit of the creature was in the wheels. As I say, it's a very long chapter, but a lot of places become desolate after this. There is destruction. There is mention of Wormwood and the Destroyer. I'm not going to read the whole Bible. You can obviously do that yourself. But in that excerpt there we heard about wheels within wheels and rising from the ground. We have proof pretty much from stone carvings, stone pictures of rockets and spacecraft in Egyptian hieroglyphics it's like flying craft we have proof that more advanced beings have been here before this is not a one-off event 
this is a recurring event and hence the reason predictions could be made like Daniel made that would happen again and they may not know the day nor the hour so the orbit isn't exact but when the signs start to show then they would certainly know it was coming <clears throat> so the great deception has been planned for a long time a way to keep us humans down subservient cattle in the field this was our designed it well it was their intent it was their designed intent for us humans to be a workforce <clears throat> So the secret sects and the Knights Templar, they've been able to gain power and keep us dumb through all these years to work towards their goal. Now I bring you right up to the 1970s and the hippie movement. The hippies were right but they got infiltrated and the free love became free sex and that was the end of the hippies. But they were on the right track and that track the deceivers did not want us to go on. In 2009 it started with chemtrails. There are three uses for chemtrails. The first and most important to disguise debris from space. The second is to cool Earth during this intense period when the sun is shining brighter and whiter than it has done previously. And a third reason, and there may be a fourth, the third reason is to be able to um, affect us humans with chemicals to either make us content or discontent. And a fourth reason, Project Blue Beam, to be able to cover the sky in aluminium particles potentially will enable them to project holographic images into the sky and again that would be towards disguising what we may be seeing in the skies there was a crop circle either in was it 1999 of a CD disc with an alien face and this CD disc was interpreted as a message and at the end of the message they said we oppose the deceivers so they are calling the people in power the secret sex the ones who who have been able to guide our thoughts and our understandings of what going on they called them the deceivers <clears throat> so there's what I'll call them 
what we've seen since 2009 and before but much more clearly from 2009 is changes in our whole solar system let's start with the Sun we probably all know that the Sun has 11 year cycles of solar minimums and solar maximums This went out of whack from about 2000, it was looking pretty normal, but 2005 when we're supposed to be in a maximum or supposed to be in a minimum, we're actually in a maximum, actually in a minimum. And you probably heard they put this on the news because it's not really something they can hide that the solar minimum was going to be the longest solar minimum and they were expecting, you know, a solar maximum and it wasn't coming, da 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 da. So they have approached this subject, they have touched on it, but by all means they're not thoroughly enough. What with the end of the programme Tomorrow's World, Back in the early 90s, we are not any longer being educated as well as we were. You only have to watch a couple of these old shows available on YouTube from 1984. They're showing us things which are still amazing now. Um, and 1993 it's even more advanced but then the program stopped and we no longer get included on the new technologies so the sun I think I felt it's whiter not so yellow as it used to be we've got new terms now for solar flares well they're not just solar flares there's solar flares there's filament eruptions and there's coronal mass ejections and I actually did a little um, session on um, my imagination the other night which brought me to this conclusion in my mind I was at a party and got introduced to someone who was a solar expert, if you like, let's say a Carl Sagan. So I, I looked at him and I said, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm very curious about something at the moment. Can you explain to me, please, the concepts, solar flare, coronal mass ejection, and filament eruption and what they are so he looks at me and he says starts off with a sort of a the Sun is a burning ball of fire <laughs> and things can happen with it <laughs> and stuff happens <laughs> So this is in my mind, this is my imagination, but that was his, his answer to me there. And obviously I just got from that, that he's not permitted to talk about these things. Now this is in my imagination, but this is an experiment you can do. You can talk to anyone, and if it kind of just happens, if it kind of just flows, you can sometimes accept that as a message a message from the all-knowing subconsciousness that we're all connected to but these things are happening and no one is fully explaining it apart from youtubers who are 
going through everything that's happening and making a video about it which is extremely helpful and we're seeing what's going on and I've been watching this for a long time some of you may remember last year May 2013 I kind of put my neck out on the line and I said it's happening now and we were wrong it didn't quite happen last year um, the reason we had a year was because of the Farsight Org project so they're part of the deception too. Again, the deceivers, they knew Wormwood Destroyer Nibiru was coming back. <clears throat> they probably knew about a hundred years ago. Because about two hundred years ago, there was a first sign, the weakening of the electromagnetic field. Whether they knew that would be the sign or not, I'm pretty sure a hundred years ago, with the steady continuation of that, because these people would have their finger in every science pie going, right? Science has been their thing to enable the more technology so that that makes them more powerful. So they knew then and they could put their plan into action. They didn't know what year then, but they knew it was coming. So in 2009, they've done their planning and the operation gets executed. The chemtrails start. So let's say you have a meteor hitting the earth. It comes in, it burns up, it creates a cloud. Saw one of these the other day and it looked like a chemtrail. I thought, well, that's a chemtrail. But it didn't happen like the normal plane chemtrails that we're so used to now. It kind of seemed to come in from nowhere and it was diving down. It looked like it was diving down, but a long straight streak. And actually, when I first thought about this, I, I remember some of the pictures and some of the times I've seen hundreds or at least scores of chemtrails in the sky. Now, how would we know if several of those hadn't been made from meteors? So now imagine they hadn't been doing chemtrails. What would we have thought then? <laughs> Hang on, we're used to blue skies and suddenly there are these choo -choo streaks of cloud that have seemed to have come from space. Then people would be asking questions. <laughs> Why are we now getting more and more of these objects, debris coming from space? And it's not just rocks and objects great vast swathes of ice crystals coming from space of which I have taken some pictures today and this is not this happens all the time not all the time sorry but it's happening a lot is your your how many times you know it's a blue sky and then suddenly there's just a a mist of cloud high up, but all encompassing. Earth is collecting matter, along with the sun and all the other planets. As I've shown you before, the solar system is careering around the galaxy. We're traveling through space as a system. 
and the sun is in the front and the planets are in its wake. So as the sun first goes through these debris and ice and everything. <laughs> ice, coronal holes, that's another element of the sun that I didn't, I forgot to ask that guy about. So it's affecting the sun and all the planets. And what have we got there? Rocks and water. Well, even though we kind of, again, been given the idea to think that Earth is the only planet, the only planet to have water, water of life, and rock to stand on, handy. But actually, these are the two most abundant things in space. Now, they're not always in the liquid form of water and solid form of rock, but that is what's predominantly out there. So whatever we're going through, coming towards, is made up of the what's we're mostly made up of. And if Earth has been gathering mass in the form of rocks, and ice, i.e. water, for 200 million years, then that makes sense why it's been growing. And why it's growing now. And we are in a growing period. So it hasn't been happen happening very, very, very gradually over the last 200 million years. There's been occasions every, oh, I don't know, 3,600 years, maybe, that it acquires a lot more. I'll just carry on with this. We are seeing so many more near-Earth objects. Now, obviously, the deceiver's explanation of this is going to be that well, we're finding more and more, we've got better technology to see more and more. But we're also seeing a lot of fireballs reported in a lot of places. There was the Russian one, there's been one in Korea. There, there have been a lot. We've seen them in the UK, although I didn't personally see one of these long fireballs that just went across the whole country. I mean, that's at night, right? So they light up at night. In the daytime, they do more of making a cloud, a long streaky cloud. So they quite often don't get to the surface, but the Earth is acquiring that matter, and so is growing. Look up Earth expansion. The, ocean, the floor on the oceans is new. The rock on the land, as we know, can be dated back four billion years still in some areas. But the ocean floor is no part older than 200 million years. And <clears throat> if we look at the dates of the ocean floor, it's in sections as you get towards where the rifts are. In the Atlantic Ocean, the rift is pretty much up the middle slightly nearer to America, and in the Pacific, the rift is all the way around the Pacific. So those areas of the Earth are newer than the rest. So what's happening now, as we seem to be in the middle of this Earth expansion event, or at least it's starting, And we'll get on to what's going to happen in later, not that much later. It's not going to be that long, I don't think. But what's happening is earthquakes, volcanoes, sinkholes, landslides. As the mass of the planet increases, it's going to get hotter at the core and expand. I don't know exactly 
if it's expanding from the middle or more from the outside or a bit of both but it would cause more volcanoes, earthquakes, sinkholes and landslides as we covered before but again the other night when I was visioning things one of the things I was visioning was <clears throat> the new island in Japan um, it's a volcano but it's creating an island and that's happened in uh, Pakistan as well um, <coughs> and just imagining the earth and it's like you know, this volcano is like a, in the middle of the water and just spewing out lava and growing and this is happening all over. You can just kind of imagine this is, you know, this is an event. This is an event. And it's happening all over. I'll show you the pictures. The volcanoes are just more and more earthquakes just loads we've got landslides and sinkholes we've got we've got bridges under pressure but more than that railways and my gosh the roads now that I'm glad I thought I remembered to talk about this the roads around where I live are atrocious Recently resurfaced roads are falling apart. And it's not just where I live. Recently driven around the area Corby, Milton Keynes and in between. And our roads are in a dire state. Now of course the deceivers have all their answers for it. They'll always make sure that there is a plausible explanation that will satisfy people. So the plausible explanation that most people will jump to is well it's increased traffic, right? Blame on all the Polish coming over here driving their cars. Increased traffic, lorries, etc okay but yeah if we were in Africa yeah I'd accept that but I don't accept it here I mean we've been making roads for a long time we learnt from the Romans and we made them like the Romans and yes I will ex accept that there would be the odd occasion or road that was made to substandard qualities cheap materials etc but no, not all over. It, you make a bloody concrete road or a tarmac road with, you know, every layers underneath as they do. That should not just start falling apart. The earth is stretching, it's pulling apart. And the way these sinkholes are created, the way they can suddenly drop down deep, the earth is opening from within, forming cracks up to the surface and then you've got a bit of tarmac over it well and eventually that tarmac's so thin it's just going to break and there's your huge hole and the same with lots of little potholes all around and I've seen out going on walks and things I there's a walk I go to and this was about a year and a half ago there was a there was a trench that wasn't there before a trench appeared. So these are the signs and yes they'll always be they'll always make sure the deceivers that there's a plausible explanation. If there isn't they'll make sure it's covered up. And I think one of the things that's been covered up is the frequency of volcanoes erupting in the last year or so the last few years really but even in 
the last six, eight months, they are up. They, are, they have continued to be active and often. And it's going to happen more and more. It's going to start happening more and more. And this is putting incredible stress upon the society and um, most of all money. So this is why all the imaginary money is being created to keep everybody wealthy. Yes, we are riding on the backs of our grandchildren. We are borrowing from the future all over the world. And it's being done because of all the natural disasters that are happening all over the world. It's not affordable in this free market. They would have gone bust. Everything would have gone bust. But that can't happen. The deceivers know this. It's part of their plan. They've got to keep it going. They are. We know they've made bunkers. We know they've made seed banks. They're preparing for the worst. They're preparing for complete desolation of the earth. They don't know that's going to happen, but they know it could. Bring you back to Ezekiel. The lands were left desolate. There are passages in there saying, the desolate lands, do not leave them desolate to be a reminder. Take them, work them, blah, 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 blah. Right. Have I got your attention? <clears throat> Were you able to clear your mind from all the accepted answers to the points I've raised here? I haven't yet said about the other planets in the solar system which have been affected. <clears throat> Do you remember the big red spot on Jupiter? Do you remember when it went? Do you know about the new spot? That spot been there for a long time. That was a big event. Big event. They don't know what... Well, yes, they do know what caused it. Of course they do. But they haven't told us what caused it. Saturn would have regular storms every, I think it's 40 years or something like that. Then they came 20 years too early. Okay? So suddenly, for whatever reason, things had changed. There was something going on on Mars, there was something with Venus. We know that there are orbit problems. We have heard this. This is one of the things that have got through. That the orbit of the outer planets have been perturbed by something. Something heavy. And they think there may have been a horizon program. You know, they're even touching on this, that there may be a, a huge planet, like in a massive orbit, but showing it never coming near us. So, right. What is happening is whatever happened in Ezekiel's time, we're coming into again. And this is my idea of it. The sun, with its planets in its wake, careering round the galaxy, are coming towards another solar system, Nibiru system, with the wormwood, the destroyer. So it's a small brown dwarf star, as we're in a binary star system now for the, since the last 200 million years. And it's got some planets with probably the life on. It's probably the Nephilim, the, well not the Nephilim because that was the mix. The Anunnaki, the, the uh, well the ones who were more advanced than us. 
and as we approach them, we first approach the outer part of their solar system, which is going to be cold, icy, rocky. And those are the fireballs and the meteors, things that look like chemtrails, that kind of started in about 2009. <coughs> 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 and if this is a seven year process, as has kind of come up before, it kind of makes sense, because it's something that would have be a big chunk of your lifetime, but not all your life. And it was gradual, so there would be a point where it became blatantly obvious. So if we're five years into that, that could kind of make sense. So what's going to happen is it's going to get more and more full on. And it's going to get to the point where it can't be denied anymore. But it could still be disguised. And this is where I think the church is going to come into it. I think suddenly the church are going to paint an idea that, you know, Satan is coming or something. When, when we get to the point where we're seeing seriously scary lights in the sky, whether in the day or the night, that's when the church is going to make its move. Or it will even be painted that the church are creating these images or something. I don't know. But I think that's the point where they're going to sort of try and make out to you. If you haven't been sucked up into the sky and taken away. That you are condemned. That you are living in the last days. This is probably going to kill a lot of people just purely out of panic. Men's hearts shall fail them. But because you didn't know what was going on. It was just sort of sudden, you know, one minute you're there on your iPad playing with an app. And then suddenly, you know, it's Armageddon. You had no time to sort of think whereas if they hadn't done all this we would have started working stuff out by now because we would have seen what was actually going on so the church will offer a way to save you and that will be to pledge your soul to some entity, they'll call it what they want to call it, they'll probably call it Jesus, and uh, yeah, so that is it, everything big deception everything is there to keep you carnal keep you thinking about sex cars money materials keeping you low keeping you low so that you won't have any enlightenment Drugs to keep our pineal gland from working, tea, coffee, 
tobacco to kill us. <laughs> the only decent thing is cannabis. Tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So, clear your mind. Make your own assertions. Ask. Ask questions of anyone in your mind. If you've cleared your mind and you're free of pineal gland inhibiting drugs, and you've started to open your chakras, and you're not eating too much crap, you'll get the answers. Your mind won't be a fuzz of crap and bullshit just going on and on, all the films you've watched and the TV programs and the bullshit you've heard spouted by the newsreaders. And then you'll get some truth. And then you'll understand when this starts getting worse, and we are, it is happening now. And soon you, you won't be able to hide it. You need to know what's going on. You can survive. Easily. Okay. Don't need to eat that much. You don't need to drink that much. You can breathe. Don't worry about the chemtrails. Okay, what they're putting in lithium to make you feel good, to make you feel content. Then, then it's gone. Then you feel depressed and ill content. <laughs> the aluminium. All right, we'll deal with it. As long as the wild plants still grow, then we'll be fine. And all this stuff coming from outer space, well, that's only going to be good for us, I think. I had a rainfall the other day and it left, you know, the Sahara dust or whatever it was supposed to be. Huh? Right? That's their story. Who says it wasn't a bit of Nibiru dust? And um, considering I drink my rainwater, I was a little bit concerned. And even one of my water bots butts got blocked, blocked for a moment, and then cleared. And um, <clears throat> did did pong a little bit, I thought. So I used my other water butt for a couple of times, and I went back to my main water butt, and I'm drinking it now, thinking. Hey, it's from God. It's all right. Hey, and I'm feeling all right. Feeling good for it. So, don't worry. Be positive. It's the only way.